So an overview of this Q&A video. Over the past couple of months, I've seen all of the questions, all of the comments, all of the video requests that you guys have been having. It's not that I don't see them. It's just that it's becoming increasingly hard on this particular platform to do the type of videos that I wanna do and the type of videos that I know you guys wanna see. And I get it, you guys might say that there's bigger YouTubers that are in your niche that have done what you've done and not necessarily. A lot of them are older channels that were around before a lot of the rules, not saying grandfathered in, but a lot of them are okay. Uh, and secondly, a lot of them aren't doing necessarily modifications to these tools and accessories you see i'm not trying to say certain trigger words uh to these tools or accessories that uh that i'm doing right now that i like to do that you know i feel like it's a little bit different most of them are just doing reviews that to say this i will be doing those videos if you guys want to see those videos make sure you follow me here obviously and on instagram to see where i will be putting up links to a lot of those tutorials or, or how to's but for now, I am going to answer a lot of the questions that I can answer on this video. Questions that have been asked seven, eight, nine times even, uh, just to get them out of the way. And hopefully this becomes a hub of answers for you guys. So bear with me. I do have a printout of some of the questions that you guys have asked, and I will just go over them in a random order. Question number one. This gets asked a lot in a lot of different videos. I've been asked this uh, in my email. By the way, if you guys don't know my email address or the email address rather for this channel, I will put it right here. Go ahead and uh, feel free to contact me there. What holster am I currently running? So this gets asked a lot. I do have a lot of holsters and at any given time, obviously this is, this changes. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm running right now. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing that rain. You probably are. So pretty much as always, I am currently carrying my PPQ and right now I am carrying it in a Makinatech Kinaflex holster. Uh, just got this by the way, I actually just started carrying this yesterday. Next question. This is based off of obviously the last video I did. Uh, what holster do you use when carrying the Hellcat? Uh, I'm not carrying it, my wife is. She ended up really liking what I did to it. Go figure. <laughs> and she's carrying it in a LAG tactical holster. Seems to be a pretty good holster. It's just the holster that I bought the Hellcat with. It seems to work. Next question. Why a light on your concealed carry gun? All right, good question. Me personally, I like to carry my gun how it is 100% of the time. How I have it on my nightstand is how I have it on my body, is how I have it when I'm at the range. I wanna be able to pick it up and it feel the same 100% of the time. I don't wanna have my gun without a light when I go to work. And then when I go out at night, I need to switch it to a light bearing holster that I'm adding an extra four ounces because I have a, a light on it, you know, or, or anything like that. Uh, by the way, uh, Clear. So that's why I do it. I want it to feel the same. It's that's just it out of all the holsters that I have I think only one or two aren't light bearing. That's just my personal preference. That's all it is I'm not telling you guys how to do your thing and on that whole why I carry a certain way trend Why no co-witness? I said it in a video a while back that there are good points and bad points to co-witnessing Kind of the same reason why a lot of people don't like an absolute co-witness. A lot of people rather a lower thirds co-witness. I rather have a clean line of sight where I can threat or target focus and that be it. And I understand, I get it. Red dots go down, you know, irons hardly ever do. I do understand that. For me, target acquisition is really important and I do it faster with a red dot than I, I do with anything else, especially transitioning. That being said, I do understand why a co-witness is important and I feel like if you're more in the competitive world with like the bigger red dots, you understand that you just want that one plane that you have to focus on and, and that be it. A lot of the open division likes that right now, but on that same token, like I said, I do understand from a tactical or a more tactical perspective of having, you know, the backup uh, sights. In my home at least, I should be able to point shoot anything within 10 yards, which is pretty much, you know, 30 feet, 35 feet. That being said, I will probably be making my PPQ 
uh, able to co-witness very shortly, at least lower thirds. So yeah, that's that's just why I do that. It's it's personal preference. And when you think about it, Walters have a really strong track record with competitive shootings. So it it just ideally when I got uh, the PBQ, it worked out well. The Q4. So. Next question: Will you ever change your recoil spring in your PPQ? Okay, I've gotten this question a lot, so uh, to answer it again for probably the fifth time, at one point I did have a DPM recoil spring in my PPQ. I didn't really notice any change. For me personally, it felt like a placebo. I would much rather have a steel tungsten or whatever guide rod in the PPQ in any gun, to be honest with you just for durability sake, which I actually do currently have a metal guy rod in my PPQ. This is the original, let's see if I can get you guys to see that. This is the original PPQ recoil spring, All right? Just to show you that it is flexible, it does bend. This is the polymer one. And currently in uh, the PPQ, let me just strip this down really quick. Currently, if you'll see, I'm gonna turn this way. You'll see right there, this is a simple, I think something like, it might be less than 20 bucks. It cannot bend. It is a metal recoil spring. And this particular one is a Canic uh, recoil spring. Walther actually just started making them too, I believe, not too long ago. So. All it is is the same spring with a metal guide rod. So no flexing, adds a durability. Uh, yeah, here's a quick comparison between the standard stock guide rod and the metal one. And yes, I have shot multiple, probably a thousand rounds through this at least. And uh, does it work? Yes. Have I had any hiccups? No. Is it better than the polymer one? As far as recoil management, I, I haven't noticed any change. So it's just for the durability. And to be honest, I am thinking about actually taking this one back out because the spring on my stock one is so broken in beautifully. It's yeah, that spring probably has close to uh, 8,000 rounds through it. So it's butter and I just like it better. So. Yeah. Mag extensions, thoughts. Usually I have around 30, 35 rounds on me. If I need more than that, I'm probably not aiming. I don't really want anybody to know I have a firearm on me. So I don't know if I can conceal it, then yeah, capacity will always be better. Uh, I just haven't really found anything like in excess of 21 rounds that I can conceal. So, or rather conceal effectively. So. I don't mind them. If they work, they work. If I can conceal them, heck yeah, give me more capacity. This this is actually kind of a cool one that I'm considering doing. Uh, somebody asks if I can do a desk slash lighting review of my setup in my office. Uh, I guess it's it's yeah, it's pretty cool. I know desk reviews are big. It's not necessarily anything too crazy. It probably looks a lot better than it is, uh, but I did put a little bit of work into it and it's it's cozy for me, so yeah. It's my little uh, man cave when my wife's not taking it over. I can probably see myself doing that video in the near future, but we'll see. I don't know how this, how you guys will receive it, but you guys can let me know if you wanna see that. I've gotten at least nine or 10 requests to do a stippling video. It's not necessarily that I can't do that video right now. Like honestly, I can't do it on this platform. I just don't necessarily have anything to stipple. The one thing I have stippled is the PPQ and it's because I thought it needed it. So you know what I'll do? I'll stipple one or two of the back straps that it come with because I'm probably going to switch out back straps and I, I haven't had them stippled. So I'll show you guys that. Again, follow me on Instagram, check the description. I'll try to put different links in there for you guys uh, to when I do drop that video on a different platform. Next question is kind of piggybacking off of the stippling question. It's how do you clean your stippling? You can probably see other videos on this on YouTube. There's nothing crazy that I do that's different. I'll show you, give me one second. And you know what, let's uh, use the MMP because it's probably the dirtiest gun I have right now. Again, everything is 
clear. All right. So the MMP stippling out of the box, I, I think we all know, especially the Pro Series, is ridiculously grippy. It's probably the best out of the box stippling I've ever felt. Uh, that being said, it eats your hands and it will take the soul out of your palms. So <laughs> if you look, let me avoid this. Hopefully this will focus. That is probably dead skin from my palm. Sorry if that grosses anybody out. But uh, the way that you, or the way that I typically go about cleaning it is with a toothbrush. Toothbrush and uh, detergent and you just brush, you just clean it. There's no real secret behind it. Uh, very effective way to clean it and yeah it won't harm your gun in any kind of way it's it's your your gun is meant to take damage and abuse some dishwashing detergent isn't going to kill it so how often do i clean it probably never <laughs> probably not enough so the next question this question has been asked a lot as well and i'm just going to go ahead and you know try to answer it as best i can can you stipple my gun uh and I've had people say they want to send in their gun for me to make a video on it. Uh, guys, I, I'm not good at stippling. I had a minor success with my PPQ. I don't like laser and gray stippling, so that's why I did my stippling myself. There are guys that do beautiful hand stippling, like beautiful work. The laser stippling to me just looks too robotic. It, it just doesn't look good. It does not look good to me. But like I was saying, I've seen some guys do it by hand. You can tell it's by hand, but it's immaculate it's just like it's rugged enough to still look like a tool like i would want to use it but at the same time it's still very very clean very very beautiful work just amazing craftsmanship so i'll probably recommend you go to a professional i know mine came out pretty good as far as a novice job but i'm not at the level where i, I should be doing your gun I, I just can't do it I, I i wouldn't maybe a close friend or you know a family member that uses their guns but i don't want to be liable for messing up anybody else's you know firearm so sorry the answer is uh no next question and probably the most requested video on my channel is to show the cerakote tutorial and i get it you guys want to see that Again, same thing as before with the stippling. Follow me on Instagram and I will put links in the description of videos when I do make that content. Okay, I will. I plan on Cerakoti a few guns this upcoming year. I will show you, just can't currently do it on this platform. So just follow me on those other places. We will get to it. I lied. This is easily the most asked question on this channel. Uh, not just the channel, my email channel, I've asked, been asked this on Instagram, everything. Can you show us how you polish your barrels? So recently I did it with the Hellcat and then you all know I have it polished on the PPQ as well, although it's kind of dingy right now, <laughs> but you can see the reflection. It's, they're both pretty much mirror finished. Yes, I can show you. And again, yes, I plan on showing you. Uh, same thing as before, make sure you follow this channel, make sure you follow Instagram, I'll put up everything on where you can see those videos when I do them. I do plan on showing you guys step by step, again, not here, but I will shortly. I can tell you how I do it though, it's not hard. A lot of you guys who've watched previous videos know that I, one of my hobbies is sharpening knives. I really like to get mirror finished sharp knives. It's kind of the same with polishing uh, anything. The internals of the tool, or the barrel of the tool. God, <laughs> this is crazy. So it's the same concept. Quick and easy version is I prefer to use sandpaper, sometimes 80, but you really don't have to go that low. Usually around 80, uh, 80 grit. And then I go to like a 160 or a 200, then a 400, then a 600 or a 800, then a 1000 grit, a 2000 grit, and then a 3000 grit. And then I finish it off with green compound and a uh, leather strop and that usually gets it beyond mirror finished of course now you've taken off any protection against like god anything to be honest with you but it's only on the exterior and honestly if you just touch it up every couple of months 
it's not a big deal. Now the sandpaper that I use is, uh, I have the sandpaper paper all over the place. You can get it at Home Depot or any hardware store. Uh, just 3M, this is 800 grit for example. Uh, you can see it right there, oh, right there, 800 grit. This is some 1500 that I have. And this is 3000 grit. This is the last grit I used before I actually use a leather strop with the compound. So yeah, that's honestly how I do it. Like I said, I will show you guys that video, uh, but you can honestly start yourself. Just every grit you slowly move up and polish and buffer out whatever scratches you may have made. And by the end of it, you will get a mirror finished uh, barrel or whatever components, internals you decide to uh, use on your tool. And I think that is it. All right guys, so remember, follow me on the other platforms. I'll put the links in the description. Uh, Instagram is honestly the one that I'm probably gonna be using the most as far as getting information out there when I'm doing different things. Other than that though, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.